been a few months since I last did one of these, so I thought I'd do an updated studio tour. The crew have gone for lunch. There's currently a shoot happening today and everything's set up. So it's a good opportunity to show you all the bits and how they work. And then I'll include some footage of the shoot itself. So it starts with the camera. Well, it kind of starts in front of the camera. We've got a big green screen environment that's fully lit with DMX controllable lights. We've got the DMX board over here, so we can adjust that depending on the shoot situation, depending on the virtual environments that we're going to use. And then we have the camera here. This is an Ursa 12K with an OLPF filter um, because we had some problems with uh, certain types of clothing would give that like, kind of moire effect. Um, and what we've got here is a nucleus tilter nucleus M system. And what this allows us to do is control this lens remotely because once you've got a lot of hardware on here, we've got these encoders that are sending the lens data back to the computer. When you've got loads of hardware on there, it becomes quite difficult to get your hand in there and control it effectively. So we rigged it up with a control system that allows you to control it from the, um, from the handles instead of having to like reach up to the thing. You can also do it separately via another little device as well, which is quite helpful. Um, we've obviously got an auto cue system on there and that allows the presenter to read the lines of what they're saying. There's nothing on there yet, but it is when they're shooting. And then what we've got is uh, some monitoring systems um, before we get to the kind of tracking and everything. We've got the original, this is just what's coming into the, to the monitor, into the camera. And then we've got a program feed as well. So once the green screen footage has gone and done a round trip via the computer and been composited, they're, they're seeing the final result. And the great thing about that is that once we have it all tracked and once it's working, we can like look around and, and shift as if we're in the real environment. Um, so whoever's on camera can really uh, see what they're doing and compose shots that way, which is, which is really cool. Uh, and the way that that works is a Vive system, Vive camera tracking system. So we've got these trackers. There's three of these for different devices. We only needed one for now because we're using one camera. Uh, and then there's these lighthouses around the space that you can kind of see uh, up here. You can just about see it. It's there. And there's four of those around the space that allows us to track the position, rotation, and translation of the camera in real time and real space. So other bits that are happening. All of this data, so we've got the lens data, we've got the tracking data, uh, we've got the video feed, that's all coming out via this loom of cables. Um, so yeah, it's coming out via SDI for the video, and then you've got a couple of USB serial connections here, uh, and then you've got Ethernet for your tracking data, and that goes over into this big old server cabinet here, and I'll show you around the front of that, of what's what's actually happening in there in terms of hardware. All right, so there's quite a few things happening in here, and this is kind of a suite of hardware that allows us to do uh, lots of different things. So let's start from the top. We've got a switch, and there's lots of things that are using various network devices, network protocols to either control or be controlled. Um, so that's just a simple switch that allows us to connect everything together. And then there's this video router, and the video router is super helpful because it allows us to uh, add and remove hardware at any point. So previously we would have our computer uh, or our cameras basically having a, a chain of connection. So it would like go to the computer and then that would go out to the monitors and out to the decks via various like splitters and, uh, and various order of those devices. And what the router allows us to do is dynamically change that. It just has a bunch of inputs, a bunch of outputs. And then if we want to change the uh, route that things are connected, uh, the kind of ins and outs, we just push the buttons either on here or on the software itself that controls it. And just, that just allows us to do lots of things. So for example, like we've got these recording decks, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, if we wanted to record um, the output to multiple decks, it's just a case of like changing where we send that signal. It can split the signal, it can route the signal, it can do all that at a touch of a button. Um, so moving down, we've got the tracking system here. This is the Vive tracker system. You can see that there's two of these uh, trackers connected. One is on the camera, which I believe is number one. And then number three is just kind of connected somewhere in the room. And what we do with that is we can put that on the floor, push this recenter button, and then it'll like 
kind of work out where the center of the room is in case it's kind of drifted off a little bit because it's not like a, a one-to-one -one positional tracking thing it's kind of working it out over time so every so often we have to like recenter it but not very often it, it's the software's improved massively over time right next we've got the hyperdex uh we've got four of these it used to be just the one or in fact we used to just record it inside of the computer but it was quite a lot of stress onto the computer in terms of like having to encode video as well as do the rendering at the same time so that's why we switched over to this hyperdeck method and like i said to begin with we just had one because we we're recording the final feed but then what we started doing was doing multicam uh, virtual production but still just using one computer and the limitation of that was that we could only render one feed uh, a single time, but we could recomposite all of the other feeds after the fact. So that meant we could just use one computer and then re recomposite later. So that's why you've got three other decks. It's to say we have our input feeds and then our program feed. So this is like camera one. At the moment, actually, it's showing the final feed, but usually it would show the, the just the green screen input. And then we've got two other decks, which can be for the other cameras once we use those this is just a single cam shoot today um but they don't have to be used for that like i said we can just reroute the signals as we want to um say we had four cameras or maybe we were outputting from somewhere else and we wanted to record it like it would just be a case of plugging in to an input and then telling it to come to one of the decks eventually and then moving down we've got a mixer and this handles all of the audio um for the studio which isn't much actually it's just a case of having a couple of microphones and then uh sending out the monitor audio whether it's the live audio that the producers want to hear or the playback audio into headphones or speakers um is massively overkill for what we do but it gives us the control that we need and there's kind of like two little bits that you can kind of see in the back there if i like turn up the uh brightness a little bit you'll be able to see there's a couple of devices here which are kind of like little exchanges little audio to sdi exchanges and what they allow us to do is inject, well, do two things. Like when we're recording, we inject the audio onto the SDI. So we're not kind of going via the camera. It's like as soon as it comes into the thing that's getting recorded, we put the audio onto that recording. So we don't have to do an external recording somewhere. And then when it's playing back, we then take that audio off it to play back into the speakers and into the headphones and things. Because otherwise we wouldn't be able to hear it. It would just be coming out of here and you, would, you wouldn't be able to get it playing anywhere else essentially because it's just sending out the video otherwise. And then moving down, the kind of bit that makes it all work really is a computer. There's, there's two computers in here actually. One's just a backup. Um, but this is kind of the main PC. And this runs all of the rendering. It runs all of the software. It runs some of the servers as well to do the network protocol stuff. Um, it's just a powerful PC. There's not really much to say about it. It's got a bunch of inputs and outputs um, for the cards. But that's another great thing is that we have all these inputs and outputs in terms of the SDIs, but we don't have to move them around. If we want to change the configuration, again, it's just a case of changing it on the router at the top. So that's the server rack. And then it's generally all controlled via this kind of gallery system here. So I'll give you a brief talk through. So this is Eximetry, and Eximetry does the compositing side of the uh, virtual production workflow. Uh, and it does that with Unreal Engine. So it's kind of, there's a separate instance of Unreal Engine running in the background. You can kind of see it here. It's like a, another, another window. And then Eximetry takes that feed and then it puts the green screen overlay on the top of it. So we can see that here, actually, if I switch between uh yeah the input see the input there's no one there obviously um because there's no one in the scene then we have like the 3d track and then we have like the final output so if i go on to the green screen beep, 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 you can see me there i just zoom in and see me on the green screen or in the environment essentially on the on the tv over there so there we go so other things that are going on here to make life easier in a number of ways, um, there's various other control methods. So up here is like all of the control for like compositing, choosing cameras, if we're doing like multi-cam work, uh, we can even animate the cameras. There's some recording functionality here um, for when we want to record the uh, tracking data. We don't do the video recording anymore through here because it, like I said, it takes up a lot of, a lot of um, processing power that we want to use for rendering. Um, but we can record the tracking data and then play that back in sync with the hyperdeck. 
Uh, and there's some custom things here as well, like we can load uh, different environments on the fly. So for instance, if I press this, it will go between the different colors. Um, and then there's a separate system here uh, that I've controlled via Touch OSC, uh, which can work on an iPad or somewhere separately, but it's just, I've got it as an app here. Uh, and then this can like move us around our environment. Um, so obviously you can reframe with the camera itself, but you might want to jump between environments. So for instance, we can jump between some presets that have been created ahead of time to kind of save time on the shoot itself. Um, so yeah, so that's the control. And then some other control is being done via down here via the, the stream deck. And it used to be that this was controlling things in Eximetry, but we switched over a little while ago to an app called BitFocus Companion, which runs uh, on the local machine, but then you control it via the browser. And then this allows us to control devices on the network. So that's why you've got that switch in there. There's various devices here. So you've got your four Hyperdex, you've got the Video Hub um, uh, router there, and then you've got the uh, mixer as well. And there's various parameters in these that we can control with these buttons. So I'm not going to do it now because it will mess up their thingy, but uh, we can hit record on any one of these decks. We can record all at the same time. We can switch the input. We can do playback. All of this stuff is controllable over the network um, rather than having to like either hit the button on the front of the panel uh, or hit them at the same time. It wouldn't matter if they weren't recorded at the same time because the time code would be injected onto them to make sure that they are actually uh, recording at the same time when you, if you're doing multicam recording and things like that. Um, but we don't have to do that. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then the storage is an interesting one. So um, over here, this is kind of like an FTP client. I can't really see it, it's gonna be super bright. Let me just turn this down a bit. Here we go, yeah. I mean, you're not gonna see it because it's tiny, but basically each of the hyperdecks is set up as an FTP server. So you can kind of see them up here, actually. I can select between hyperdeck one to four, and then four is selected right now. And then all of the clips here are, uh, on the deck and we can just see them. So we can either download those, um, but what we don't really need to download them actually because when we play back on the deck, it's playing back straight away and we can we can view it as we need to. Um, and every night these get backed up to a separate server. So then they can be kind of like collected and, and looked through and you can do your logging there. So it's good to know that they're being recorded. You can kind of see all the clip names and everything. Um, but it's not something we have to worry about. It's kind of like all of the media management gets done kind of after the fact once you've done your recordings. So that was a, uh, let's just turn this up. Oop. That was a whistle stop tour of the studio and all of the new connections and all of the new kind of hardware that's up and running. Um, it's been running well for the last uh, kind of few months, really. There's been minimal issues, um, but there's some things that I would like to upgrade. Um, I think multicam is like a big feature that would be great to get up and running in a more sort of robust way, especially the fact that you have to like composite it afterwards, which isn't a bad thing because trying to live composite three cameras at the same time is kind of asking for problems. So it's nice to be able to change things after the fact and kind of up the production value there. Um, perhaps some of the monitoring systems would be good to upgrade. At the moment, it's just kind of fed around the room. And so you've got various stations here. Uh, you've obviously got the TV, so you can kind of see what's going on. And then the director's station here. They've got the uh, the final feed as well. Um, the audio is being routed around the room, so anyone with headphones can sort of just plug into uh, there's various like preamps around the room so they can hear what's going on and not just like see the presenter. Um, lighting is kind of one that is in constant progress really uh, and the dream was to have it set up so each of the lighting scenarios would be controlled via um, like the app when you switch environment it could change to another lighting scenario that you'd, you'd set up previously so it matched but in reality there's so much tweaking there's so much to do whether it's in camera or on the lights itself it's kind of not been really worth doing but having it there on the uh, DMX control board allows you to kind of adjust those things without having to go between all these different lights because there are quite a lot of them and they're quite uh, some of them are like you're not going to be able to reach up there um, so yeah that's about it for now um, there's lots of work to be done to kind of like tidy up some of the cable cabling um, 
make it maybe more network controllable so you don't necessarily have to be in the room to control a shoot or make it a bit more kind of self-serve. Uh, yeah, more cameras. We currently use C70s as our kind of like B and C cams for this, which are, are great cameras, but they lack sync control, which means that the tracking data and the uh, visual data isn't coming in at the same time. Whereas on this device, like here on the Ursa and other cameras that have this, um, you've got this reference in your time code in, um, and we're using that to basically tell it that the tracking data is coming in at this frame and the uh, video is coming in at this frame and to synchronize the two. So it means that when you do move it around, and you won't be able to see because there's there's no one in the scene. But when you do move the camera around, um, it locks in with the talent or whoever or whatever is in the scene as well. Um, C70s don't have that. So it, they can be used as static cameras, which is fine, but it limits us to that. Whereas it'd be nice to be able to move everything around and not have to think about it. Um, yeah, some live graphic systems. That's kind of in development, but dependent on use case, I suppose. Uh, but yeah. Any questions, thoughts, queries, wonder why we do certain things in a certain way? I'm always up for uh, discussions, so maybe you find it interesting and let me know what you think.